you start seeing some of the leadership qualities that you spoke about with, with Dejuan? Well, I mean, you, you saw it last year when he was with his team. He, you know, one, he loves to play. He, he's, you know, and I said since the beginning, he's a lot like Barry. You know, he's got that determination, that that grit, that you know, he he competes all the time. Um, you know, he always tells us, you know, coaches, we need to do more competitive drills, and you know, he just he just loves it. You know, and and he loves the game, and and he's starting to. I think he, you know, you know, everyone's frustrated. We haven't won, and he and he wants to win, so he's speaking up a little more, and you know, which is a positive thing. He and he backs it up with his play. He plays, you know, obviously plays so hard. I mean that he had a swollen eye after the game. He had you know bumps, bruises, and. You know, he probably would have went right back out there and not not quit playing. On the on after the game, during the post game radio, that that was the comment that really uh, struck me was um, that he's emerging as a leader, and I don't know if the older guys want that or not, but he's wanting to play at a different level. Have you got, gained a sense from the older guys that they are accepting him becoming a leader? Well, I don't know. You know, it, it's just all I'm saying is that he's you know he by his play and his determination and and he uh you know is it's just he plays so hard you know it's not always perfect and he makes a lot he makes mistakes and but he just plays so hard and and uh, you know he gives it all so and and again i you know we'll we'll see how it evolves but you know i i, I love that he you know he's the one that you know, he's not backing down. He's playing determined. He's playing, you know, like I, I talked a lot before the game, you got to have grit. You're not going to win in this league without grit and um, and resilience. And, and, you know, he, he has that. So, um, you know, and it again, it, it, he's, you know, I, I'm just saying for probably more than anything for the future than anything, but it, it doesn't hurt if he – if he speaks up now also. It was noted within this room that he hasn't started any games this season. Can you see him? Yeah, there's a good possibility. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about it. it you know, it's it, – the, you know, the thing is he, he does – it. I don't think he cares, you know. I mean, all guys have a little pride, but in, he really just wants the team to win and whatever is best for the team. And, you know, he has – like I said a couple of weeks ago or a week ago to you guys, I asked him how many minutes he's getting. He got 27 minutes. That's, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's definitely starter minutes. So he's, um, you know, and he's got to get better, you know, but he wants he wants to get better. He he constantly watches film, texts me, texts the other coaches. You know, he it it's very important to him. He's shown an ability to play, you know, a lot of different spots for you guys. If you had to, you know, pigeonhole him as one, like where do you think he most is? Well, he's probably more a th like a two slash three, you know. It just he's that athletic slasher kind of guy that, and he's got to get better at his skills. And we've talked about it, and and he knows it. Um, and you know, just what some kind of pull up jumper, some you know, just add to his game. And and that'll, you know, he's really I, a year ago he did not shoot many threes, and you know he's really put a lot of time in, and you know he. Uh, his percentage dropped a little bit the last last few weeks, but he was 38-39 at one time, and uh, that you know that's pretty good. Is there anything you guys can do in, in practice or anything to just avoid these these offensive drafts you keep uh, having? No, I, I I don't know. We try, we do. You know, part of it I, I told you, and it's not an excuse. We again today we'll have two or three guys out. We and. and you know the scout squad does a great job of of running other people's stuff, but they're not very good defensively. <laughs> so it doesn't really it doesn't give us that true test. And um, you know we've over the holidays we when we had time to practice we we put two minute games up. We just said okay it's sixty three up let's go you know go play and and then we would put end of the game things last minute you know we just did different things. Uh, you know it's it's I, the one thing we did yesterday we watched almost the whole game. And we talked about execution and the little things that make a difference and, you know, being a little more patient, taking better shots, um, you know, not giving in to, to the, you know, the first shot that's contested. Uh, you know, I, I I hope, you know, that can come uh, sooner than later. Uh, I, you know, they and, – and, you know, it's so funny. I, I think between TCU and Texas, they hit, what, uh, 10 or 11 – uh, shots under three seconds left, and all of them were threes. And um, 
you know, but and we don't get we don't even get to that. I think that's part of our problem. We're not we're not patient enough. If you really watch the game um, and watch it again, I thought our first half defense was about as good as it's been all year. Um, you know, they hit five, what, four or five threes, four of them at the end of the shot clock. Um, you know, the guy, it, it it was really good. I mean, I was amazed when I went back and watched it. It was, it was really high level. I thought we did some good things offensively. Um, you know, we just, it was hard to make up for the first threes and they started a game and then they hit that one at the end. But we played well, and then I, you know, that for obviously first seven, eight minutes, second half, I, I don't know if it was the fatigue because we didn't travel, you know, we traveled day at a game, and we get there, you, you hit a wall. I don't know. We took bad shots. We didn't have, you know, that that toughness to to fight through it. Uh, we had a couple easy ones. We just make two of those layups, and now it stays at eight or nine. And now we make the run, we come back, and now we put them in a bind. But, you know, when we miss those layups, now it's at 14, 13, and, and now you fight back and it's still at, you know, it, it's still in the, you know, seven, eight points. So it's tough to overcome that. Is it fair to say the effort and the attitude is still where you want it from the team? Yeah, I mean, they play hard. I mean, you always can have some of the guys play hard. I think that's part of our problem. A few of them don't understand how hard they need to play, but uh, – you know, at this level, and that's what you learn. Uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, but uh, overall, it's it. They, you know, they do. They play hard. I mean, it's not a question. And, and you know, their their attitude. They want to win. Uh, I haven't seen any of that. You know, have they played perfect? No. Do they take bad shots? Yes. You know, those type of things. Um, you know, but uh, you know, we need a little better execution. We need a little more. You know, toughness when when it gets to be a gut check part of the game, and um, you know, and see if we can you know get over the hump. I I don't you know we'll we'll keep trying. I I, I mean I know I will. I hope they continue to do it, and they seem to be doing it at this time. Do you sense a pattern that's leading to these kind of droughts offensively, or what's kind of the main issues behind those? Do you think? Um, you know, I, I don't. Part of it, we probably don't have one guy that can go with wiggle and get a basket. You know, that's just. Uh, I like what Cardi has done, getting to the hoop. Obviously, his perimeter is is shooting from the outside. The you know the th free throw line and to the three point has not been, a, not been there. Uh, you know, I know he's disappointed because he's worked very hard at it. Um, but I, I would say that's the. You know, we we don't still have one guy. We can say, okay, you know, I watched last year's game of Texas Tech, and you know, we we, you know, both games were grind out fights, and you know, who could make a couple tough shots? You know, there they did at our place. Barry did, you know, and 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 Dean, you, know, you give it to Dean, and he goes one on one and jumps up and shoots it over them. That's and and right now we don't really we don't have that. I guess that would be the thing. Obviously, the other part is we've got to finish inside. We got to. You know the big guys. I think that's that's a big thing. You, you went zone a little the other night. Was that yeah. just to save some legs, to see a new look? Uh, just you know, get them stagnant. We did it last year against yeah. them. You know, the first time it worked. Second time, Ramey hit one from what the the Longhorn. You know, it. it you know, what do you do? It, it's. Uh, uh, you know, we just saw we went low zone press. That was part of the game plan. Maybe just get them out of rhythm a little bit. Not have to guard. You know, two or three ball screens. Just guard one. Um, you know, get them a little stagnant. They've had they get stagnant themselves, and they've had their droughts. And we thought maybe it would help. And you know, press a little bit with those young guys. They they play with a great energy and got a steal or two. And um, you know, that got us got us a little bit of energy. Get back in the game. I know you're always going to cross paths with guys that you recruited at one point and were interested in, but this Texas Tech game is a little bit unique with. Kevin McCuller, a guy that you were really interested in. What do you see in his game? What does he bring? Um, you know, he, he's had to fight back from his injury, and that you know that set him, I think, way back. And he's just like a lot of freshmen trying to figure it out. Uh, I think it's a little funny because they got him playing the four now, and and you know probably even though they run motion, but he you know position wide they're playing positionless basketball, but he he he, he doesn't handle handle the ball as much, and he's more a you know kind of screener stepper, you know, and he'll slash and make plays around the basket. So, um, but he's you know I I think he'll he'll be uh, you know once he gets a year under his belt, I think he's going to be a good player for them. Talked a lot about Dejuan, but where, where do you feel like Antonio Monte? Well, you know, Monte's played his butt off. You know, he finished a play. You know, the threes. I think you know, 
all we're telling him, we're not telling him not to shoot him, but make sure you have your feet and you're open, you know, drive it. I like he drove a couple times and, you know, that I thought he showed some uh, tenacity on that. That was a good thing. Uh, you know, Antonio, you, you, when you don't play for two games, it takes a toll, you know, and, and uh, you know, and you don't practice for a while, um, you know, it, it, that's, you know, another thing. So, you know, he, I think a little bit, he, he, you know, he hasn't shot it well, so he's lost a little bit of confidence on that. He had some open ones, you know. I, I you know, and I told him I haven't told you not to shoot. I've told you what your percentage is, and I told you to get in the gym to shoot, and and so that when you are open, you feel confident to make it. And you know, I, I you know, some like he made a little lefty layup in the game, and you know, three months ago, no chance. And so to his credit, he's worked on stuff like that, and. He's gotten a little bit better. Obviously, it would help if we make a couple open threes that, you know, it changes the game. Are you still looking to add anything to the 2020 recruiting class or after today? Oh, yeah, we will. Yeah, we'll okay. definitely, um, you know, we. I, I think we'll probably try to get another big and then we'll decide about, you know, maybe another a wing or something, like a 3-4. I think that's what we've looked at. You know, somebody... You know, when when you get Antonio and Monte hurt or sick, now we had we have no one to play there. So do you have right now? You got Xavier that can do it, you know. But then we, you know, we're limited number wise with guards. So, you know, I think that would be the only thing to get somebody that could play that three four if if we did, and then possibly another bigger looking at a big. There's one play that uh, struck me as kind of interesting that game the other day where Cardi near the end of the shot clock passed it to David. Neither really one of them was in a good spot. Was that just a lack of communication between those two, or what, what kind of was the mistake? Yeah, uh, you know, I think you know that's where our guys got to see the 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 shot clock, and now Cardi go make a play, go get, you know go challenge them, and and we got some shots blocked. You know, they they had such great length, um, and then even David when he got it, he should have went and made a play. If you go back and watch it, we showed it to him. As soon as he got it, he had a rip to the basket. Now, now you read it and make a play. Instead, he he like got tentative, backed it up, and now he got stuck, and we didn't get a shot off. And you know, it's we had hit a you know it, it's that you know you teams do it all the time. You get on the road and. You know, the other team picks up their intensity, and that's what Texas, credit to them. They got into us. They they, they made it tough on us. And so now, you you know, do you, can you overcome that? You have, you know, can you overcome that? Somebody go make a play. That's, you know, some of that's experience. Some of it's having a guy that can go have some wiggle and make a play. Some of it is, you know, just uh, a little luck, get a shot up there, and it goes in. Or later on. Cardi penetrates, kicks to David. He shoots a three at one, you know, two seconds left and makes it. So, uh, you know, that that kind of thing helps. Uh, on Texas Tech, are they playing any differently than they have? Oh, they're playing pretty similar. They're just not as experienced as tough as they were. They're still – they play very hard. Um, you know, they're playing positionless, pos, positionless basketball. They, they uh, you know, playing a lot of small ball. Uh, they had against West Virginia, obviously, they got those bigs. They had to play, uh, you know – use their bigs a little more than they have again in other games. Um, you know, it's a little bit of motion. It's a little bit of switching, a lot of stuff. It's ice ball screens. Uh, you know, we, we, we did a great job both games of limiting points last year. We got to do that again. Uh, and then, you know, hope we can make some shots. Forgive my ignorance, but in your successful career, I was just curious from a historical perspective, other freshmen that you have seen kind of step up, kind of like Dejuan is this season from a leadership standpoint over the years? Um, I, I'll i think about it. I'll get back to you and see what, uh, you know, I, I don't know. It, it's, you know, it's, you know, a lot of freshmen don't even get a chance to play, but, uh, you know, the, he, has, he has pretty good tenacity. I mean, Barry tried. He just, you know, he just, he had, you know, he hit a wall. He was confident enough to do it, but he just kind of hit a wall. But you knew, you know, you knew. Like, I, I joke with you guys. I asked who's going to be a defense stopper, and he raised his hand. I said, put your hand down, you know. And, and then I said, now who's going to be at the end? And he raised it again. And it's like, but that's his determination. You know, he, 
and he was. He ended up being. All, he's the one up on the concourse, all-time leading steals. He was, you know, he guarded anybody, and you know that's the kind of thing you you, you love and about him and and guys like you know like Dejuan one that have that determination. Yeah, and as a follow up to that, just with Dejuan one kind of leading the way and having these new guys coming down the road. Very, very important. Yeah, it's it's very important. And we've talked to the young guys. They, you know, we got to keep them, um, you know, not let them get frustrated and down because they're they are very important. And you know, it it makes a difference. Kind of follow up to both those questions. Dave one mentioned that it was just something internal. You know, it's kind of made him become more vocal. How encouraging is that to you as a coach? It's not like you had to go to them and say, "Hey, start." Yeah. I mean, he's done it before, but he's done it like under his breath from the sea as a season. But now he's um, he and a couple times I've asked rhetorical questions and he's answered them. And I'm like, you're not supposed to answer that. You know, there's just it's, I'm just talking to make you think. So it, uh, now it's a little, you know, just he, he, and he wants to do well. I like that. You know, he wants to win. He just keeps texting me. We're going to win, coach. We're going to win. And, you know, that's. That's that. That's the difference in guys being uh, just average players and really good players. Anything else for coach? Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Coach. Thank you. Thank you.